the video. We're back out on the water. This time we're on a sib, soft hull, inflatable boat, my new one. So as you know, I had an Air Deck V, 3.8 meter, and now I've got this little beast. Looks like something the bloody SBS would be using. Just needs a machine gun on the front there. But yeah, it's the Pro Carbon 365 by Boat World. This boat has got so many extras, which I will show you. As you can see, we've got a bit of a northeasterly breeze today, so it's not the smoothest. I was going to try and do a top speed test, but we'll have to see because uh, I'm getting bounced around like you wouldn't believe. The difference between this one and the other one, this has got an alley deck. I think this boat weighs about 69 kilograms without the engine. Just come out, it's 6 a.m. The sun has just risen, just for a play. Conditions are due to get worse actually, so I'm not going to go far from the bay. Got more of my safety gear as per usual. What an absolute delight. I have to say, I'm really, really digging the sibs at the moment. I've got a Warrior 165, which is a fiberglass boat, but the sib for me is just so versatile. Roll it out the van, take it wherever you want, and that is just ultimate freedom. We're gonna cane around the bay, have a little play, and then uh, I'll bring her back in and I'll show you some of the uh, features and discuss my thoughts. So I've got a fish finder on this. If you watched my last kayak video, I took this fish finder out on the kayak. It's a Garmin portable fish finder unit. So we've got the fish finder, seven inch striker. And we've got the battery set up and it just runs a cable all the way along down into the transducer arm. And that sits connected via a uh, Railblazer starport. I've got the trusty Tahatsu, 9.8 horsepower, four stroke. Well, I tell you what, the wind's picked up since I've been out conditions aren't ideal there's a little boat over there they're doing some fishing i flew the drone over there earlier on they don't appear to be catching much they must uh, have the same look as me Blue treat just a quick first look video today i'll show you more when we get back just tried a bit of a speed test got about 13 14 knots but conditions are not favourable really, I'm getting bounced around a bit too much so I didn't want to push it any further than that so we'll do that on a flat calm day and do a comparison to the air deck right, start her up All safe back on dry land now. There she is. We'll do a little walk through now. Okay, so it's a 3.65 meter pro carbon. Uh, the material on this is some sort of like extra roughy tufty latex 0.9 mil. So it's a bit more suited for what I'll use it for, for like wild camping, etc. Okay, the transom is made from glass reinforced plastic. So a mate of mine, Jason, who knows these boats, told me that this is the one because it's slightly longer. It's like 17 inches or something. Whereas on the Excel boats, they're a little bit smaller and the boys with the, the engines are struggling a little bit, but she is pretty thick. Like I say, here's the, uh, this is an extra, obviously. This is my uh, transducer mount. Just on a Railblazer starport there, which I screwed in last night. Okay, right, the trailer. I get asked loads of questions about this trailer. So this is a Suprod trailer. Everyone seems to really like these, but 
I don't know if I'm a fan anymore. The reason being, when you put it down, down a slip, this floats so easy, and it just, it's a nightmare for getting it underneath your boat when you're trying to recover it. But it does fold up super small, so I do get it. There is a link for all this and any extras in description. Right, let's carry on. I've shown you my engine before. It's a 9.8 Tohatsu. That's done about 20 hours now. Needs to tidy this cable up. So yeah, it's a nice carbon material. It's got grab handles at the, the rear. It's got like a nice rope along. I think all that's fairly standard. Got your ore attachment points there. Um, yep, there she is, another grab handle, and these as well. These will be good for when I free dive off it and I'm trying to recover myself, I'll just pull myself back in. At the front, you've got another handle here. I don't like that logo there. It just looks a bit cheap, I think. The rest of the boat looks amazing. So, yeah, personal preference, not a huge fan. All these mounts, by the way, I'll talk about these in a second. So these, that is actually a railblazer mount, but some of them are a brand called Barica which is like an alternative brand. Pretty good, more or less the same, but I'll talk about them shortly because it might be a handy tip for anyone who's, like me, got both. Weighs 69 kilos without the motor. Two aluminium seats, which can be slid up and down. I didn't really feel like I had them too secure, so I'll need to work on that. They were sliding a little bit. Fuel tank, aluminium floor, which is actually pretty good. It was nice to stand on in the lumpy conditions, but, it does add to the time. My last boat was an air deck V-hole and it was literally like pump, pump, oops, and you're away. So yeah, a bit more setup time. I think uh, got my anchor there. I don't know why I bothered bringing my fishing net because you know me. She's got a cat sea rating, which is holds up to about five adults. Um, essentially two meter swells. So out there today wasn't anywhere near that, but you can see you feel a bit exposed. So let's talk about some of the little extras that my boat has. So like I say, it's got these mounts everywhere and these are two different mounts so that is a railblazer mount which my warrior which is over there my warrior is kitted out with all these full disclosure boat world sent me this and said can you just take it out and test it let us know what you think any improvements get some nice shots we don't want anything else so yep yeah, but i ended up buying it off them because when it arrived and i inflated it i thought i'm a massive fan of that that is that's a bit of me that so this is my boat, I've paid for it with my own money. But this is the one they had at the show, so it's got all the extras on. It's never seen water until now, so this is a Barica Fast 10 mount. So essentially you put your accessories in, click it in, lock it in, yeah? So you'll see that, where have I got? I've got a cleat over here. In fact, that whole rear arm is held on with that, so let's get that. So yeah, unlock it, lift it out, yeah? So, so these can go anywhere. There, so there's a little cleat. Lock it in, it's not going anywhere. And the same, this whole unit at the back is held on and it's all quite adjustable. It's lovely actually. Um, so just to demonstrate, there you go, like so. If I wanted to move that to say here, there you go, she's in. So yeah, all very adjustable, quite nice. But I've got pretty much every conceivable railblazer thing you can imagine. I use them on the kayak, I use them on the boat the transducer arm, everything. They're all linked to it. So what I wondered, and thanks to John, by the way, the guy who lives just there, he sorted me out. So this here's a Railblazer camera mount. And what I've done here is, it's nice to know that that wasn't locked at sea, handy. I've already lost one GoPro this week, better not lose another. Um, okay, so, oh no, it was locked. Right, so what I found is, this is a Railblazer top. And this is a Barica Fast 10 mount at the bottom. So you can take the top mount off and screw the Fast 10 out and, sc and screw the Railblazer mount into there. You might be wondering, these are not, a, they are not compatible. The stars are different, so yeah, well, there we go. So if you've got both like me, you don't need to worry about spending a load of money. You can just do adjustments if you've got spare star port adapters. Paddles seem pretty good order. Nice, nice and light. I did have the fish finder here. This is the portable unit. I showed that in a previous video, which I'll link here if you're interested. Uh, but yeah, this is nice. I quite like this. I think for like what I want to use this boat for, like wild camping, etc. You know, put my anchor light up there and attach all sorts to it. So that's going to be pretty good. Don't think there's much else to show you guys. Happy to answer any questions. This is Coast Guard. For the Maritime Safety Information Broadcast. 
always handy having a VHF. So setting this boat up for me took about half an hour, 40 minutes, but it's the first time I've ever set up an aluminium floor sib. So it took a bit of getting used to. Into the bag, got the seats, that's the floor with the oars, and there's the boat. I put the floor in when it was deflated. It just seemed a bit easier to go in. Clip the sides in. Thanks again to Jason who gave me some tips. Also, if you're gonna leave these out, drop a little bit of pressure out of them. It seems to uh, do the job. And when you're inflating the keel, so this bit here, it goes on the boat. I lifted my boat up a little bit and it just it took shape a lot easier and it, I think it was a less stress, less stress on it. So that's always good. Anyway, that's the first look at this boat, guys. This is gonna do some 24 hour overnight camping, exploring missions, pulling up to beaches, going into caves, free diving off it, maybe diving off it. It should be pretty good. Super stoked with it. So thanks again for watching this first look video and you'll see plenty more of this on the channel. And I haven't forgotten about the sharks, but if you can imagine me chumming on this thing, something coming up and taking a bite, it wouldn't be a good day. Right, I'm gonna tidy this away. Thanks guys, as always, stay safe and I'll see you again.